I want you all for a moment just to close your eyes. I want you to picture yourself in your childhood kitchen. What do you hear, see, and smell? Do you see your siblings waving their forks around, like hailing a taxi, maybe stabbing each other? <laughs> um, do you see fresh basil? Smell it? Do you feel your toes warming from the oven? You can open your eyes now. I want to share a little bit about my own sensory experience in my own childhood kitchen, since my kitchen was a restaurant. When I close my eyes, I see frozen shrimp spooning each other. I see lacquered pork shining like a jewel. I see broccoli like miniature trees. The sound of oil hitting the walk like a snake sighing. All of these visceral details I'm sharing with you come from my unique background growing up in a Chinese-American takeout restaurant on the Jersey Shore. My bus stop was actually the restaurant, which is slightly embarrassing as a child um, to be dropped off at a strip mall. Um, but this was my experience. And these memories still to this day despite many years passing by, remains so real and so visceral for me. How do these memories stay so alive? The answer, language. And of course, imagination. And all of us here today can sense the world around us in a multitude of different ways. We can see steam rising from a pot of boiling water. We could smell the ripening bananas. We could see the color of them browning as well. We can hear the crackle of the fryer. We can feel the scales of a fish. We can taste that bitterness in coffee grinds. Language is all around us. And as such, we are all writers. And I want you to be the author of your own story, of your own sensory details that are already within you and all around you. The poet and activist Audre Lorde writes that our poems are cards from the daily rock experiences of our lives. In other words, language is from our lives. It's not out there. It's already part of who we are. And language, as a result, connects us with people. Sensory details are required ingredients for the art of a writer. And I want to make sure that I get across the, the idea that writing is not learned in school. Actually, I was just introduced as getting an MFA from the IR Writers Workshop. But I got my degree at that Chinese takeout restaurant. Um, and I learned how to write there not many years later in graduate school. Writing is not for writing's sake. It's already, again, from your own personal experiences. I want you to write down your stories, to keep these details with you, to take a closer look at the stories underneath the daily experiences of the rocks you carry with you, and to lift up that lid of the boiling water and see what you find in there. I want you to connect with people through language, through minute details that have a story already embedded within them. And I want you to honor the language that is around you um, and to honor the people that are around you as well. I want to keep it relatively short because I want to share poetry um, that gets that exact idea across with you that sheds light on the specific sensory details that I'm talking about. And this poem is about growing up in that famed restaurant. It's called How to Pass the Time in the Restaurant. Brush your hair 50 times. Untangle that hair from a wool blanket. Shake up a can of orange soda. Defrost that shrimp. Now defrost your hands. Chase the curly white dog on the train tracks. Brew honey water. Water the jade plant covered in dust. Wash off the graffiti 
off the restaurant, draw on the backs of menus, hiss at boys, see how long it takes for gum to fall when you stick it under the table, sweep up piles of your father's cigarette butts, breathe in deeply, peel grapes over a purple bucket, and now take those grapes and roll them underneath a fryer and see how long it takes for them to melt. Imagine them melting days from now. Punch a bag of flour. Listen to the sound of gravel under tires. Clean the muck out of that white dog. Teach your grandpa to say apple in English. No, he says. Teach me in your language how to say poverty, floods, and pollution. And now that I've shared a piece of my own upbringing, I want you to reflect on your own through those sensory details to those tiny, tiny, minute details. And I want you to use it to tell your story and connect with others. I want you to literally punch that bag of flour in your memory and write down what comes out of it. Thank you. <laughs>